So those are the transitions inside Sapphire Edge. But there's more than transitions. We want to talk also about filters. And there's four filters that we can look at. They're all stored up inside the effects menu under video filters in Sapphire Edge. There's film damage, film style, lens flare, and TV damage. Let's take a look at TV damage now. A little later, I'm going to go into detail on all of these and especially show you how to animate a lens flare. And at the end of this presentation, I'll show you how you can work with these exact same filters inside Final Cut Pro 10. But let's start at the beginning. Select the clip that you want to apply the effect to. Go up to the Effects menu. Go down to Video Filters. Go down to Sapphire Edge Filters. And let's apply TV Damage. And already our image looks pretty, <laughs> pretty damaged. This is what would happen if you're looking on a bad CRT television from the old days before LCDs and LEDs and plasma displays. And if this is all the filter did, is it changes and shows all this different video damage, that'd be kind of cool, but the real excitement is what happens when you double-click the clip to load it up into the viewer. Go to the Filters tab, and while we could tweak these settings, it's much easier to click on the Load Preset button. This opens up a whole separate viewer, which allows us to see literally dozens of different filters that can be applied that are all related to TV damage. Well, there's so many, in fact. We can grab this slider and drag it back and forth so I can see more of these at a time. But notice that they all show my image, and if I click on it, it instantaneously updates the image with that particular filter. So it makes it really simple, really easy to be able to take a look and see which image applies to the kind of look you're trying to create. But what makes it even easier is if we go over here to the Tags category, notice that there are 59 presets that we can work with. If we want to look at just those presets that affect color, we can select color and just those presets that affect color, or we could say just those that have a black and white look or a rainbow look or a yellow cast, or we could say we're working in a particular genre of which there are 28. Maybe we want to have an action look or a horror look. Grab this and, and look at our effect in a, a Zilla eye or a grievous gray or <laughs> be afraid, be very afraid. Once you find the filter that you like, go down in the lower right corner and click load. It now applies that filter directly to the clip. With that filter applied, we can then go back to the filters tab and we can now start to tweak some of the settings. Maybe we don't want to have it be quite so severe, so we decrease it, or we want to have it be even more severe, so we increase it. Generally, just changing this first slider will be all you need to do, and you don't need to change it a lot to be able to change the look of the effect and customize it to make it your own. Notice that this clip requires rendering, and to render that, you would go up to the Sequence menu, go down to Render Selection if you've got the clip selected, or Render All if you want to render your entire timeline. Or you can use my absolute number one favorite keyboard shortcut of all time, which is Option P. Option P will play a clip that requires rendering without first rendering it plays it a little slower than real time. But many times, you just want to get a sense of what does the effect look like, and does it fit, and is it spelled right? Did I put it in the right spot? Well, you don't need to render the effect to see that. You just want to play it, and slow motion does a great job. Now, we have four different filters to talk about. And that's what I want to do now, is to go through each of those filters and show you how we can change them, modify them, and in the case of the lens flare, animate them to get the look that you want. All that is coming up next.